Hi, Griff Hamlin here with a lesson today on what I call the most popular strum in the world. Uh, I say this because uh, having done, well, thousands of guitar lessons over the years, it seems like of all the songs that I teach people, this particular strum pattern comes up time and time and time again. Uh, probably yeah, there, there must be at least 60 to 70 percent of all the music out there where this particular strum pattern could be used. And now maybe it's not always used, but it could be used. So let's jump right in. Now this is based, uh, this is assuming that you have kind of a mid-tempo song in 4-4 four, four time. And what I mean by that is we have four beats per measure. That, that constitutes most music out there. I always call this the Brown Eyed Girl example. Uh, I think of the song Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Uh, things like Margaritaville, Peaceful Easy Feeling by the Eagles. A lot of songs that you know fall into that kind of mid-tempo, not too fast, kind of easy, you know, regular songs. Uh, this this particular strum pattern will work. So if you take this strum pattern and put it together with whatever the chords happen to be, you should be able to sing along and have a tune. So here's how it goes. Now, if we have four beats, there's actually eight places that we can hit the strings. And the reason it's like that is because we're gonna divide the measure into eight pieces, and that's eighth notes. So the reason we call it eighth notes is because we're dividing the measure into eight pieces. So if we number them, it's one and two and three and four and. Now really, that's just what we call each beat, one, and a half, really, but it's too hard to say and a half, so we just call it and. One and two and three and four and. The reality is, I don't really care what you call it. You can call it red, green, purple, blue, violet, orange, and yellow. If that makes sense to you and you can remember where you are, that's totally cool. It doesn't really matter what you call it. The only thing that matters is that you strum at the right time and you hit the strings when you're supposed to and you don't hit the strings when you're supposed to. So I'm going to use the one and two and three and four and method of, of marking each place. But if you want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you could do that. If you want to count A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you could do that. It would all work. Okay? So here we go. It's going to be as follows. I'll, I'll do it really slowly a few times. Hopefully you can kind of stay with me. Now what you're going to notice is that my right hand is always going to go down on the numbered beats, the one, two, three, and four, and it's always going to come up on the ands, okay? So it's going to go something like this. One, oh by the way, I'm doing this on a G chord, so grab a G chord. You can either do the traditional G chord, or I have my third and fourth fingers on the top two strings. I call it the rock G. Okay, so on a G chord I'm going to do one and, I don't hit any strings. Two and three. I now this is the tricky part. I go down, but I don't hit any strings. And four and. Okay, so I'm doing something on every single count, and that's what's important is that you keep your arm moving. If you find yourself stuttering with your arm, it's gonna all fall apart, and it's gonna fall apart quickly. I see it every day. So keep that arm moving, that's what's important. Okay, let's try it one more time. One and two and three and four and. Again, one and two and three and four and. Now if I speed it up just a little bit, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I think it's really important, by the way, that you count out loud while you play this. If you say to yourself, I'm going to count in my head, you won't. You'll forget about it. <laughs> You'll go off and you know your, your brain gets busy. It gets to do other things. There's something about verbalizing this while you try to play it that seems to make all the difference in the world. And I could tell you a big long story about how often I've seen that be the case, but I'm not going to waste the time right now. So trust me on this one. Let's try it one more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right. 
Now, if I do, for example, four chords in a row, G, and then C, and then G, and then D. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same strum pattern for each of four chords. I get something like this. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. You get the idea? And now you're playing music, and it's really pretty simple. Now you might have to play it slowly, Oh, you're going to have to play it a lot of times slowly, and that's okay. Keep it slow, keep counting it out loud, and just keep doing it until it becomes natural. Try not to speed it up. Try not to jump the gun on it, because you'll play it wrong, and then you, your brain will have options. We don't want that. We want your brain to only know how to do it the right way. So take it slow, take it easy, make sure you count it out loud, and good luck with that.